Beloved, on September 15, 2018, I was given 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. It was indicated to me that God has established a group of vital truths for this last moment in history, and I was made to know that it is vital to know where we are today in history and why we are there. And it is very vital to know why history repeats itself, because that is God's will. I was told that even if it seems tedious or unprofitable, we must pay close attention because it is God's desire that this be done. I was told that it was necessary for us to burn our eyelashes with supplication and prayer, asking for wisdom to understand this vital issue and be able to explain it to others. Then, Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 was pointed out to me. The prophecy gives us not only knowing the time in which we live, but it is a series of knowledge that God has revealed over time to His true people so that they grow in spiritual and mental wisdom to help, to help oneself and to help others. To be always ready before the daily and final test of the history of this world. So at that moment, while they were telling me this, I was given several gifts in the dream. There were boxes, and they were wrapped with wrapping paper. I was told to open each one of them, and each one of them, when I saw it, had a vital foundation. In the message that God had given to His true church, I signed them in one of the boxes were the Ten Commandments, in another, the sanctuary, the message of the three angels, the health reform, the prophetic line, the message of going out to the countryside, etc., etc., and so on. Each one of the messages that we as a church already know. So while I was opening this gift, it was pointed out to me that these messages had to be internalized by us but not by our, our own wisdom, but by the grace of God and the help of the Holy Spirit, then we were going to reach at the final product that was already in small pieces in the previous gifts or previous messages. Then I saw that in the boxes that I opened of gifts, each one of them, which contained a pillar of faith, had a small piece that my companion told me to put aside. They were like pieces of a puzzle, and although they harmonized perfectly with the content of the gifts as a pillar of faith, at the same time, it was part of another scheme while still coordinating with the message or gift that was given to me. Thus, each of the gifts that were given to me had a pillar of faith plus that little piece of puzzle that although it fit perfectly with the pillar of faith, I was told to put it aside and that's how I began to do it. When finished giving me all the gifts and taking all the pieces aside, I was told that no one who does not internalize these gifts will be able to effectively reach the final product. Then at that moment, I was told what you will see now already exists in all the gifts and each one creates a stronger union with Jesus Christ. Then my companion took the pieces and put them together in front of me and told me, this is the final stage, the one that will solidify it for the last final test and the receiving of the latter rain. Then I saw the puzzle and in this the words, death to self, the message of justification by faith. When I saw this, I was astonished, and I was told, these extracts taken from each message do not leave in any way without validity the previous messages. Then I was given Revelations chapter 22, verse 18, and I was told, the message of justification by faith is nothing more than that we must become crucified with Jesus Christ. At that moment, they gave me two biblical quotes, 
Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 and Romans chapter 7 verse 19 to 24. He kept telling me that if I do not understand the simplest, the dismembered, the first preparatory step to reach the strongest and ask a question, how am I going to achieve it? He asked, and then he formulated another question. Shall I say then this, the former is worthless since I already have the latter? And he himself answered, in no way. Then he formulated another question. Shall I say then this, the whole thing is worthless since I already have the latest? And he himself answered, no, not at all. Then it was indicated to me Luke chapter 11 verse 40 to 42 and Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 and Proverbs chapter 15 verse 32. And while I was looking at these verses, he formulated another question. Is it because I didn't know it lacks meaning or because I don't understand it lacks value? And he himself answered, no, in no way. And he said, nothing that has been or is addressed to you before the second coming will lack of salvific value for us. And he continues saying, whoever does not accept it will be guilty of sin and judgment before God and the holy angels. Then I was given three more quotes, Romans chapter 2 verse 6, Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, and Hebrews chapter 2, and continued asking, Perhaps because the Son died, will I reject the Father and the Holy Spirit? And he answered, By no means, since three are the heavenly dignitaries in pro for the salvation of man. Hearing this, beloved, I remembered what was said in the book of Evangelism in the chapter entitled Dealing with False Science, Cults, Isms, and Secret Societies. So while I was remembering this, I was told Romans chapter 5 verse 9. And he asked me a question and asked the following, What is justification by faith? And he himself answered, Justification by faith is the work of God, whereby every person who believes in Jesus Christ and repents of their sins will be converted into a righteous man. When I heard this, beloved, it really was as if a screen, something different, something I had never seen in this profound sense emerged in front of me. Justification by faith is the work of God, whereby every person who believes in Jesus Christ and repents of their sins will be converted into a righteous man. I woke up, beloved brothers, feeling this, which was so deep, that had been mentioned to me, and wanting to treasure it and writing it as soon as possible, so as not to lose any of the details. At that time, while I was doing this, other verses came to me that I want to share with you. Revelations chapter 12, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Romans Chapter 4, verse 25. Romans, chapter 3, verse 24. Romans, chapter 8, verse 33. Acts, chapter 10, verse 34. Acts, chapter 13, verse 39. Romans, chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. James, chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. Romans, chapter 3, verse 20 to 25. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 6. Romans chapter 5 verse 9, Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Titus chapter 3 verse 7, and Romans chapter 8 verse 28 to 39. May the Lord grant that each of these verses and these messages fall on fertile ground, on ground that is really seeking the Lord, so that we can, dear brothers, cling to the Almighty, because only for His justice only for His forgiveness, only for His grace, we will achieve victory. May the Lord bless you all.